another day, another pair of stretchy pants. It's max upper bench day, and I like to use ATG split squats to warm up the hip flexors for getting in my arch. And as always, going into max effort day, I have a little bit of a plan, but I'm also leaving myself some options within that plan. First part of that plan is gonna be to work up with some close grips. And I mean, like, as of now, shit's a little bit sticky, but I think we're good to keep up with the close grip. But before we find out if I'm going up or not, get yourself around a group of lifters who give as much of a shit about training as you do. I'm inviting you to join Team Activated, a community where you will find all of the support, education, and mentorship necessary to reach the highest levels that you can in this sport. <sighs> The freaking coolest thing about that right now is I can actually like feel my tricep strength catching up and letting me like flex through the weight to lock out. That has been missing for so freaking long and I am so, 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 so excited to have it back. 355, reasonable jump. Feels pretty okay. And like, I'll say it again, that tricep flex is so freaking sweet to have back. Also at this point, I think it's safe to say that we're just sticking with the full range close grip for the rest of the day. 385 on the bar now. Good. Yeah. We're good. And I mean, if you just moved 385 like that, what would you be thinking? <laughs> Something like that, right? So yeah, let's smack it. There we go. <laughs> Kinda pissed that I clipped the J-hook there, but really happy with the press. And I mean, slosh a 10 on and not rocket it into the J's. Yep. Dig the fuck in. Pop! <laughs> Good, strong, looks like. Yeah, so that is best bench press since the pec surgery. And like the sickest part of this is like, I knew I could get here. I knew I could do this. I knew I could get my bench better at 250-ish than I was at 320-ish going to the last meet, but I did not freaking expect it to be this soon considering the weight loss, considering the surgery, considering everything. So yeah, we're rolling. And part of that rolling is gonna be cranking into some JMs starting with 275 because bench ain't gonna grow itself and last week we learned that going straight to 140 kilo was a little bit aggressive so we're going to go 295 for set two. We're going three. <laughs> 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 
And like the way I do my GMs, the way I do my rollings, my tates, everything that builds my bench, it's all like a little bit gross looking, a little bit sloppy and not like strict triceps work. But I find that like the, the sloppier, the rollier, the not total triceps isolation builds what the triceps need to do in the bench press so much better because like the triceps job in the bench isn't that pretty. It's like they're just like trying to shove the elbow in. If we can just get better at making them shove the elbow in with shoulder action, with that having to push through and stabilize against the rib cage, like that is what I think builds triceps to the bench. Might not be the best for triceps hypertrophy and the nerds are gonna not like that, but fuck the nerds, I bench more than them. And right now I'm a little bit pissed at myself for choosing to run incline dumbbells in this slot because the dumbbell press area is really freaking busy but whatever we're just gonna spin the bench around for the influencer bullshit lighting and because there was a dude in front of the hundos when i went to grab them we're just going straight to the 120s we're already warm right should be fine Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Round two, 120s again, because the heavy dumbbells here are underneath the dumbbell rack and kind of a pain in the ass to get out. And I figure I can afford a little bit of volume at this far from the meat. <laughs> Very okay with that. No worries. Yep. And I figure we should supplement the incline dumbbells with some stretchy, intent hugging practice. Bottom end of dumbbells is so much more aggressive than the strength curve of that machine. I am very ashamed of how pathetic that is. But I mean, we gotta do them if we want them to get better, so we'll do another set. And what I'm thinking right now is with how hard those feel in the bottom, and how hard the machine feels at the top, I should probably just start doing one of each on each of my bench days to make sure we're touching both ends of the equation. I don't have a clue if this is gonna work as good as the setup we ran the other day, but Cole has the prime handle over here, so we're at least gonna try it. I think it honestly feels better with the cable than the weird strappy pull down tower. Satisfied customer. Okay, round two.
yeah, I think we figured out how to make pull downs, I mean push downs, actually work. And I figure I'm gonna try to push loading ever so slightly on the scat plane fronties with a very heavy 30 pound dumbbell. Feels appropriately challenging. I don't know, mechanical tension or something. Yeah, those are sick. And now we're gonna run some of the single arm rotated torso reverse hugging arenos. And we're just gonna fucking crank. Which means I probably have too much weight on here for the opinion of most YouTube forum police, but whatever, we're building a bench. And people on the internet always want to ask, like, why don't you just use cables for your delts? But the thing is, is that we don't really have a great cable setup for side delts here, so we're just making do with dumbbells. And because I didn't do what I was supposed to do last night, we're going to do it today. And instructions here are literally as simple as hook your foot to a cable, let that back leg go into some hip extension, try to manage your brace, manage your pelvis, and then you're just gonna pull your knee up, go down, managing brace, managing pelvis into a little bit of hip flexor stretch, and then just do reps from there. And then the hardest part is making the dismount leg change smooth, but we got it down. <sighs> I'm liking these more than the lying version right now because with standing the cable is pulling backwards so we get more of that like having to resist being pulled in hip extension and we get a bit better of a hip extension stretch so we got one out of three lifts pretty much back now like almost 1.5 like squats are getting really damn close and the more i'm kind of thinking of it the more like i'm realizing that bench coming back the best it's because with the pec tear I was the most freaking worried about bench through the cut. I was the most locked in, the most cranking, the most pushing everything around my bench press because I knew that if I didn't push around my bench press, I would have no freaking chance at being okay when it came time to start ramping up loading again. And like with squats, I knew squats were gonna be tough as well to get back because I've been here before. Like I've, I've lost weight. I've, I've lost weight and went to a meat prep and like squats freaking suck. So I was on it, I was diligent, I was deliberate with how I was doing everything in regards to squats to give myself the best chance of coming back. But the problem with how I was treating deadlifts during the cut is like, I was just going like, oh, if I get sumo better, it's just gonna be this easy peasy, I'm skinnier, better leverages, conventional is just gonna click and work. And I think it's because I assumed that conventional was just going to click and work because I was trying hard at sumo that I ended up fucking myself and conventional just totally disappeared. And I think like the moral of the story here is that as soon as you start assuming that shit is gonna be easy, like the moment you go like, oh, this is gonna be easy, I don't have to try, you are gonna get your freaking ass kicked because you will quickly realize how hard, hard things really are. And that's not a bad thing. Like acknowledge that hard stuff's hard, have that be your reason to crank in and give it your everything because you will not know how good you are until you really freaking try at something. And the disheartening part about that is, is like when you start finally going all in on something, when you put everything you have into something, you quickly realize how not good you are in comparison to where you think you might be. And like for a lot of people, that's a reason to never even start in the first place, to never even throw themselves in the ring but if you can get through that stage of like shittiness and building and just needing to go through the eating shit for long enough until it starts to click holy shit does it get fun when it starts to click again so guys dig in 
crank hard, get your shit together, and don't let something being difficult stop you from doing it. Also, if you give a shit about your training, hurry up and sign up for Team Activated because it is a bunch of people in there all working their balls off to be as good as they can, helping each other along the way while getting direct access to and mentorship from me in addition to all of the educational content that I am pouring my heart into right now. So get in there. It is sick. I wouldn't be pumping it this hard if I didn't believe in it.